We're now at a point where we want to start talking about more dynamic data. That is data that is not hard coded or pseudo random like we already have in our view. So in other words, I want to actually have something from the database, right? So that's what I actually want to show up here instead of this right here being hard coded, which is not great. And this right here is pseudo random because Python rand int cannot actually be random. It's not true random. So it's pseudo random. And so I want an actual entry from the database that will go into my HTML here. Now doing this is not really then hard to do, but it can be a little confusing. So the idea is we want to have a way inside of our Django project to kind of keep track of one specific kind of data. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we go into the terminal, let me break down the Explorer here. And inside of this terminal, we can list things out. We see our project, we see manage.py. What I want is I want a specific section, a specific folder or module that is geared towards one specific thing, right? So I'm making a fairly complex website, but let's start with something pretty basic. Typically, if I was building this website from scratch, I would actually be doing not the basic to start with. I would be doing the hard stuff to start with. But since we're still learning Django, we're going to start with something basic so we can get really those fundamentals down. And so I'm going to go ahead and run the command Python manage.py and take a look at some of the options here. Now, the option I'm looking for specifically is this start app right here. Now, start app, of course, is right next to start project. We're not creating a new Django project. Instead, we're creating a piece of this project. Now, I actually like to think of this more as start component than start app, because this is a piece of the greater project itself. App also has the connotation of like a mobile app on your phone, and it's not that. It's certainly not that. So what we want to do is we want to start a new app using this command that will handle something. In my case, I'm going to just do it for my blog. I may or may not build this out fully, but the idea is I want to actually build out something to understand how Django interacts with the database. So let's go ahead and do Python manage.py start app. And you know what? I could totally call it blog and that would be generally okay. But what I want to do is I want to call it articles. Now, the reason I'm calling it articles is because I'm going to have blog articles. And so the table name itself, I want it to be articles. And then the model name will be just article as we'll see in just a moment. And so we've got articles here and the articles app is going to be really simple. If we open up the file explorer, what we see here is a new folder that was created that says articles. Now, the only reason mine is green and yours might not be is because I'm using Git. And as a reminder, that's because of our GitHub. We actually have everything on there in TriJango 3.2, all of that code will be on there. So you can actually see these things. That's why it's green. Otherwise it wouldn't be. Anyways, so now that we've got this articles, we see that there's several things going on here. One called migrations. We'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and we have init files that turns any given folder into a module. If you're not familiar, we have an admin file. That is something we'll come back to. We have an apps.py file. Also something we'll go back to. Models.py is something we'll do in just a moment. Tests, we'll come back to. And views, hey, we've already seen views before. This is pretty cool. So this means something for us, something that we'll absolutely use in the near future. So inside of models.py, this is actually where I'm gonna go ahead and create my first database model based off of the app name of articles. So I'm actually gonna call the class of simply article. And that's gonna inherit from models.model. Now, every single Django model inherits from models.model. This is a bunch of code that is built into Django so that whatever we write here can at least be associated or verified that it will work with a database that Django already works with. And we'll see that flushed out a lot as we use more of these models. So what is it that we're trying to define here? Well, what I'm trying to do is I want to actually have all of the different fields that we be associated with article. Now it could be something as simple as just content, right? So the content field, it has all of our content. Now I sort of think of this in terms of a document itself, right? So if we opened up a new page here and did command N or control N and just said, Hey, here's 
you know, an article, the content is actually what's inside of this article. If I try to go to save it, it's going to say, hey, what do you want to name this file? Now, of course, I'm not actually going to do that, uh, but that should give us at least two different values that we might want to have in this article. One being the content, the actual content of the article, and the other one being the title, right? Shocking, a title and, and content. That's probably really, really straightforward. But the idea is still there. These are the two data points that we absolutely want to keep so that in our views, perhaps in the database, we want to get the you know uh, article name and perhaps we want to get the article content and render those things out in here. That is certainly something that will be incredibly common when you start learning how to use models and connect them with views, as we'll see. And so I wanna actually get this data. Now, I'm actually gonna give you some simple data to do this, and it's models.text field, and then we'll use models.text field on content as well. Now, if you're familiar with databases and how the database schemas work, you'll probably say, hey, title should not be text field. Instead, it should be a character field or a char field. And I would totally agree with you, but this adds a complexity level that we just don't need to get into yet. So we're gonna stick with just text field for both of these. I think this is pretty straightforward. And also, if you think of this in terms of like a form that you fill out on a actual web page, this is actually sort of what's going on here. Okay, so we now have our first model. And now we just need to know that we need to let Django know that this thing even exists. And that's what we'll do in just a moment. 